What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Aftersound here, bringing you Splinterlands content daily. We also stream on this channel here on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sunday mornings U.S. time. So come by and say hello. Okay, so I want to talk about rewards cards as uh, they currently are. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind are the fact that we have some new rewards cards coming into the mix in a couple of weeks here when the rewards rank rewards update comes through, as well as uh, some big, I would say, you know, big implications on what the new reward structure is going to look like with the focus points and reward shares overall. So definitely something to to think about. Now, this this whole thing for me about focusing on maximizing my rewards cards right now, sorry, not maximizing, but maxing out my rewards cards started with a conversation that I had with Darkest Night a couple of weeks ago, so shout out to Darkest Night, and then was further solidified uh, in the most recent town hall. So just to recap that you know small part of it, with the town hall, uh, or with, with this new rewards update, we knew that DEC earnings was only going to be reserved for people who, not people, but accounts that owned cards and were playing with either owned or rented cards, right? If you were using starter deck cards, then you would no longer be able to earn. Um, then we found out about this thing called reward shares, and that was the term Matt used, right? A couple of weeks ago, we heard focus points, but now there's these reward shares that you get from focusing on whatever your task is for the day uh, or your daily focus is, and you start acquiring that and you're able to play more, uh, you know, you're able to play more and then earn more cards through that. Sorry, er, earn more reward shares and then get more chests, which could potentially lead to more cards. So from a DEC perspective, this is something that I'm very excited about and we've talked at length about. But now that we know that these reward shares will only be earned in the same way that DEC will only be earned, uh, meaning that you have to own the cards or play with owned cards, whether you own them or rent them, then that actually signals to me that there may be less rewards cards coming into circulation, uh, at, at least not as quickly as we thought there were, right? So there's two schools of thought. The, the, um, the previous way that I was thinking about this, which could still happen, right? But I, I'm, not, I'm not as optimistic on that one anymore, and this is uh, my, my entire philosophy has changed, is the fact that I was initially thinking that if this rewards structure came out, and maybe they were offering more chests overall, right? Because that was that was kind of the idea where, you know, bronze sucks because you only get one chest. So now if you're able to earn more chests in bronze, um, then that would mean more cards would be hitting the market. Therefore, prices would actually come down, right? Similar to what we saw last year in, in October when they introduced the new rewards cards and bots were just farming them left and right. And then as soon as the bronze nerf happened and you were no longer able to earn, uh, you know, cards or the... the percentage of cards was reduced in bronze uh was it bronze three even bronze two and one actually but you know um that that to me or not that to me but you saw the prices rise significantly on all rewards cards obviously the hype and you know crazy euphoria that followed with the market was was a big part of that too but the uh restricted supply is what allowed the prices to kind of stabilize and start moving slowly up now as you can see here you know we this is probably the cheapest we've seen rewards cards, which is kind of insanity. So uh, oh, this is still by circulation. So let's go back up to price. Yeah, we can do price. So um, let's go back down here to our common cards. Oop, I meant to click rewards. So, you know, these are going for two cents. I think even less than two cents. If you look at it on Peak Monsters, I think it's like 1.7, 1.8 cents. So these are, I like, I don't know how much cheaper they can get unless they go down to a penny or below a penny. So yes, they can always go lower. But my thinking on this is now, and especially with more rewards cards coming into the mix, is that less cards will be earned and hitting the market, meaning that there could potentially be a significant supply constraint. Now, how does that work? What am I trying to say with this? Well, overall, the thinking behind this is that once this rewards update comes through, then the massive amount of earnings that bots were running before, meaning that they were, you know, bots can come in and essentially just farm. They can't farm DEC as much as they used to, and they won't be able to farm DEC in the future uh, as much as they are doing now. 
But also, if DEC and reward shares are going to be kind of the similar in-game currency, right? Um, and again, reward shares aren't a currency, but they are things that you could earn just doing your daily quest and earning, uh, doing your daily quest and playing. But if you are not going to be able to earn these reward shares, then that means that all these bot accounts that don't own the cards are going to be earning significantly less towards getting to their goal. So it's going to be a balancing act of, are there going to be more chests than there were before? Is it going to be a significant amount? And then is the reward shares or are the reward shares going to be constricting enough of a supply and, uh, you know, disincentivizing form of uh, behavior for for bots or, you know, bot owners um, or people who run bots, I should say, so that they aren't running all these accounts that have, you know, only half of an owned or rented collection they will start moving all their CP to one or few accounts and start playing at the higher levels where they, where they can earn a lot more or they can earn a lot higher quality cards, right? So it's not just about earning more cards, but also a higher chance of getting packs, a higher chance of getting gold foils, higher chance of getting legendaries. So with that being the case and these cards being as you know super cheap as it is right now, whether or not my theory is right, another reason that I would focus on maximizing these cards is because they're the cheapest at this point in time. They're the cheapest out of all of the other cards. And if we do expect the market to start taking a broader turn, I'm not bullish on it, right? I, I, like, I don't want to put the horse before the cart here or cart before the horse, whatever the saying is. So I, I think there's still a lot that needs to happen and I think there's a lot of uncertainty still and I might cover that in a separate video. But if we, if we do expect a little bit more bullishness, if we do expect more players to come in or with the validator nodes, like all this attention potentially coming in, that could also be something that constricts uh, supply or at least creates more demand, I should say, which would, uh, you know, have an, uh, a significant impact, significant impact on the supply and the price of cards. So that's why my focus has been on these rewards cards, especially with the new rewards cards coming in. I want to make sure I have these ones locked down and then we are supposed to get, I think, roughly 10 more rewards cards, which has been announced and from there i'll start you know i'll start hopefully earning those within the game and then you know not that i want to be selling cards but if i have these cards maxed out at that time and i were to get you know a harkla or an oshanis or something <laughs> we won't talk about oshanis but if i were to win any of those cards um then maybe i would consider selling them in order to get and level up the new rewards cards right so it would be something where it's just like all of these Chaos Agent Rewards cards I have completed and I'm good to go and I want to play at the highest levels. Now let me move on to the next one. And then hopefully by the time I'm done with that, Chaos Legion won't be sold out. I'll be able to focus on Chaos Legion for a little bit before Rift Watchers comes out. Then I'll focus on Rift Watchers and it's going to be it's going to be a mess. There's too many cards that I want, but I am focused on Chaos Legion and Chaos Legion Rewards from here on out. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure that I try and max out my deck, even though it's going to be expensive. But this is kind of why I'm enjoying the sideways market i'll call it you know bear market sideways market whatever you want to call it uh, because it is allowing me to earn more to win more and slowly start building up my deck which is as a player i highly recommend everybody to at least consider doing so that's all i have for you in this video just something to think about when it comes to rewards cards and where you're allocating capital when it comes to cards obviously don't buy cards that you're not going to use um, you know, if you have something that is more pressing for your deck, go for it. But for me, I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. This is not financial advice. And so we'll see. We'll see if it ends up being the right move in the long run or not. Who knows? I like to th I like to say that I could be wrong. So <laughs> if these cards end up being uh, going under a penny in like two months, then, you know, that then I lost out. But I'm happy. To, I'm happy to take that. I'm happy to roll those dice. I'm happy to take that gamble and, uh, and go from there. So have an amazing rest of your day. I will catch you all in the next video and I will see you around the game. Take care.